During the next couple of weeks, we're going to be spending a lot of time talking about plant anatomy and physiology. So essentially, plant parts and what those parts, um, what their functions are and what they allow plants to do in terms of um, growth and reproduction and um, spreading around, um, around the planet. We'll look at um, characteristics that distinguish our flowering plants from our woody plants and our vascular plants from our non-vascular plants like this, um, um, this one here. Um, but I thought we'd start off just talking again a, a little bit about what makes all plants the same. Um, the fact that they are multi-celled organisms um, and they are eukaryotic, like you and I, like animals, they have um, cells with complex organelles, which we'll be reviewing in a minute. Uh, rather than membra cell membranes like animal cells, um, they are made up of cells with cell walls, um, which allow them to um, create a certain structure. All plants are photosynthetic, meaning they, um, as autotrophs, are able to create their own food, uh, unlike us as animals. Um, so that's what gets them into the plant kingdom, as we discussed last week. This week, we're really going to be talking a lot more about how plant growth occurs. And in general, plant growth occurs in, in different pieces, in specific parts of the plant. And those parts are called meristems. So we're going to be talking a little bit about plant growth, um, primary and secondary growth. Um, and all plants, uh, like all living things, um, are able to reproduce. Those of you um, who remember your biology, the seven signs of life, that ability to be made from cells, um, to feed, to grow, to reproduce, to respond to stimuli. We're going to be talking about all the different mechanisms uh, that allow plants to do that. Um, so starting with the plant cell, which we'll, um, we'll do a quick review on a little bit later this week, um, we'll take a look at what structures within that cell allow a plant to do the things that they need to do. Um, so the functions that they carry out, the plant processes, which we'll be covering a little bit each week, um, of, of cellular respiration to provide energy, photosynthesis to provide food, um, which we'll talk about a little bit later, and then the movement um, of water and nutrients throughout a plant transpiration. Again, um, to be in the plant kingdom, you've got to do this one thing and do it pretty well, and that's photosynthesize. So we'll talk a little bit more about that um, in later weeks when we look at the anatomy of leaves, and we'll also talk a little bit more about reproduction in the anatomy of flowers, and also reproduction in non-flowering plants. Um, so there's, there's different ways that plants um, can reproduce, both sexually and asexually, that we'll cover. So in order to look at all of that, we first need to kind of understand plant growth. Um, most plants have the ability, like other living things, to grow continuously, um, but they have different stages of growth. We'll be talking about that this week in plant life cycles. So plants have a vegetative stage where they're just growing vegetative structures like roots and stems and leaves, and they also have reproductive stage uh, stages. Um, so when they're actually producing flowers or spores, depending on the type of reproduction that they undergo. In general, we talk about all types of plant growth in terms of primary growth and secondary growth. And so the actual creation of new tissues, um, so as plants are differentiating their cells into root tissue uh, versus stem tissue versus leaf tissue, uh, as well as the enlargement of that existing tissue. So when we talk about the difference between annuals and perennials in a minute, we'll be talking about the difference between primary growth and secondary growth. Um, so kind of the, the, the enlargement of existing tissue, um, like rings on a tree. When we talk about plant growth, um, a term we use is uh, meristem. And I've got some illustrations coming up here that talk a little bit about um, what meristems look like. But in general, a meristem is any part of a plant, although we typically find them at the tip of the root and the tip of the shoots, um, that's in the process of actively growing. So it's actually um, dividing and creating new stem tissue um, or new root tissue, uh, new cells that have um, complex and, as we'll see in a minute, um, um, differentiated uh, functions. Um, a lot of the growth that we'll be looking at right now is meristematic growth that happens at the apical meristem. And apical um, or terminal, you could even think about it, is, is at the tip, is at the end. So right here we're looking at um, a, uh, a root, the very tip of a root hair. If this uh, drawing down here, for example, is uh, the root of a plant, this would be the very tip with the root cap. And then the tiny little things you have hanging off here are the root hairs. Uh, if you ever have pulled down a root, um, which we'll talk about a lot next week, of uh, the structure, and it's got the little teeny hairs, or if you're ever shaving a carrot, for example, those little, little hairs um, that are on the side are those root hairs. And they're the ones that are really actively engaged in absorbing water and nutrients. Again, we'll talk more about them later. And that's kind of that um, tissue that's on the epidermis, the outside of the root. At the very tip, so here you see an actual um, 
um, magnified version of it. This little root cap we're going to be experimenting with a bit in our um, in our lab this week. So this root cap is actually um, uh, just a, a, a group of cells, and, and these cells have a very unique ability uh, to sense gravity, for example, so they know which way to grow, to grow down. Um, but this is an example of a meristem, this kind of the root cap, and then you've got your meristem right here. This area right here is where cells are actively dividing. And so when cells divide, um, we have a couple of different types of cell division. If you remember again from biology, there's cell division that happens because of um, the need to create gametes or sexual cells. So that would be like your sperm or pollen or your eggs, for example. That kind of cell division happens through meiosis. And then mitosis is cell division where you're basically just creating an exact replica uh, of an existing cell. And this is to create new cells. Um, in a region of growth like our meristem here. And so if we were to even um, zoom in even further, if this was kind of a living sample, we'd be able to see that cell division happening at the very tip of these roots. And we also see it at the very tip of the shoots. You'll see an illustration uh, a little bit later when we talk about stems and leaves. And so here is my apical meristem of my root. Plants also have lateral meristems. And so um, right here you see kind of a cross section of a plant. Uh, in an herbaceous plant, so a plant that's always green, it doesn't ever develop a cork cambium or a woody stem, um, that lateral meristem is growth that's happening from the inside working its way outside. So if you think about apical meristem um, being at the roots and the shoots, you're seeing the roots elongate and you're seeing the tips of the plants grow, but growth can also happen from the inside for example to make a, a, a stem larger or wider as it grows and that would be an example of lateral meristematic growth. Um, when we're talking about plants, uh, as we did a lot last week, we're really looking at plant, um, plant growth uh, in specific plants. While they all have cells, they all photosynthesize, they all create um, apical meristems and lateral meristems, um, depending on the type of plant we're talking about, growth will happen in different places and in different ways. So if we kind of go back to last week, we talked about how all things um, that have cells, that photosynthesize, um, that reproduce, that grow, respond to stimuli, those are in the plant kingdom. But we begin to be able to break down the different levels of taxa based on other structural characteristics. So for example, within our plant kingdom, we have plants that we consider vascular plants and plants that are considered non-vascular plants. And the division, because this is at that division or phylum, phylum division level, that next level, is what that internal structure of the plant looks like. Plants that are non-vascular, such as mosses and liverworts, they don't have complex internal meristem. Um, while they undergo primary growth, they wouldn't undergo secondary growth, for example. Or as a vascular plants, which is like all of our trees, all of our um, herbs, and uh, all of our shrubs, um, grasses, they all have internal structures that we're going to be looking at this week that allow those plants to transport water and nutrients um, to different locations. And then further down, for example, we can break up after the, the kingdom and the phylum or division, we can start looking at uh, class and order. We begin to break down plants based on their reproductive anatomy. So do they produce seeds, such as our pine, pine trees that have a, a, a non-covered seed, or our uh, angiosperms, which is our covered seeds, like in an apple tree, or they produce via spores, like our ferns. So you can kind of start to see how certain groups of, of plants can be lumped together based on their structures, their anatomy and physiology. Our non-vascular plants, like mosses, produce spores, so too do our ferns, but our ferns are over here on this size, side because they have uh, vascular tissue, which we're going to be talking about quite a lot in the next couple of weeks. And then from that, we can break it down from class. How that vascular tissue is arranged, for example, is different in a dicot than it is in a monocot. So our roses and orchids, the grouping of that vascular tissue called xylem phloem is different than in your monocots. We'll go over a lot of this in the, the, the content this week. Um, so in general, um, we're just looking at kind of the big picture and we'll look at the specific breakdown of how that vascular tissue is arranged and how those meristems grow um, throughout the week. Uh, we group, again, these plants based on similar, char similar characteristics because how they grow 
uh, can um, is determined by how their anatomy is arranged. For example, a lot of our very simple land plants like mosses and liverworts, um, they don't have vascular tissue, so they don't have a way to move water. For example, the xylem is a vascular tissue that moves water from the roots elsewhere. So instead of that, they have to rely on a process um, of osmosis. They have to rely on the movement of water from one cell to the next um, without that complex vascular tissue. So this can tell us a little bit about where those plants are able to live, right? They can't live in a very dry environment. They can't live that far away from water. Whereas plants that have xylem, which is the vascular tissue that is able to um, transport water, can live very far from water and can populate land. Ferns have that vascular tissue, but they still reproduce by spores, so they're a seedless vascular plant. So again, we're just kind of starting to see how we divide plants up based on anatomy and physiology, their parts and their functions. And understanding what those functions are, for example, what is the function of vascular tissue, can tell us a lot about where they're able to grow and how we can best grow them. And so that's kind of the focus of our week. Um, in the next uh, bit of reading you'll be doing, and um, in one of um, the upcoming labs here, you're going to be hearing me talk a lot about vascular tissue. In general, the two parts of vascular tissue we'll be discussing will be the xylem, which is our water conducting tissue, and the phloem, which conducts kind of the, um, the materials that a plant makes through photosynthesis throughout the entire plant. So we'll be actually looking at vascular tissue. We're going to be focused on vascular plants this week. Um, and when we look at the different parts, the roots, the stems, and the leaves um, in vascular plants, then these two vascular tissues are what we'll be describing and how their arrangement, whether the xylem is actually an X in the root versus in small circles, can help us determine um, the classification of a plant and sometimes can also show us how best to grow them and sometimes how not to grow them uh, based on that arrangement of tissue. Um, in general, the three areas we'll be focused on over the next uh, three weeks will be the roots, the stems, the leaves, and we will also be talking about the reproductive parts of plants. But um, if, again, if you go back, for example, our ferns, they're an example of a vascular plant, but they don't necessarily reproduce from flowers. So we'll actually talk a bit more about um, flowering and reproduction in plants a little later. Um, so vascular plants that we will be focusing, focusing on um, will contain both the gymnosperms, so like our pine trees, for example, our woody plants, uh, as well as our flowering plants, um, those with cover seeds, for example. Uh, we'll look at the specialized tissue in the roots this week, and we'll talk a bit more about the um, stems and leaves in the coming weeks. Uh, and how they're able to take up water and move it throughout the plant, and um, then how the products of photosynthesis that are made in the leaves are then circulated um, back throughout the plant as well, and how those adaptations allow them to survive in very unique environments. So we'll be covering this, um, just wanted to give you kind of a quick overview. Um, but in general, we're gonna be talking this week about plant growth, particularly the meristems, and how um, that growth in vascular plants allows them to um, to survive in a lot of different climates and, and regions in the world.